Shane, thank you so much for joining Channel Vision today. So ACT Museums and Galleries incorporates the Canberra Museum and Gallery, which is where we are now, and also three historic places in Canberra, but we'll get to those in a minute. First, let's have a chat about the Canberra Museum and Gallery, so tell us more about it. Well, thanks Gabby for your interest. Um, I'm the director here, I started uh, about a year ago, um, and I'm finding it just a blessing of a job, really. We have a growing collection of about 6,000 items, uh, representing um, Canberra and the region's social history um, and some of our very best visual arts which we're surrounded by here and we often have uh, quite large-scale retrospective shows alongside a permanent exhibition looking at uh, different stories in Canberra's history and our fabulous Nolan collection of some of Sidney Nolan's um, most famous works and indeed some of his earliest paintings from the Ned Kelly series. Yeah, that's right. Our um, education programs are very, very popular, uh, particularly with younger children, and we have a few groups of those booked in every week, it seems, coming through. Um, we've had uh, some programs where children actually make art inspired by the exhibitions that are here, get into the uh, Sydney Nolan paintings, and get into different aspects of Canberra's history. We have a few paintings from a very early uh, painting competition to paint the site of the National Capital, really before it was developed as Canberra at all. Um, so you can see St John's in Reed, a little bit of smoke coming out of a shepherd's hut in the background, and the wide grassy field of the limestone plains. Um, some of those paintings are amongst some of our most valuable and beautiful works. Museum and Gallery. Tell us about that one. Yeah, that's right. We've got a uh, knockout barista and this is a fairly new thing for us. It's been running about five months. Um, we put together a fairly detailed business plan, but there has been a cafe here previously that didn't go so well, but we're turning a really healthy profit now and we've got free Wi-Fi, uh, luckily, provided by Transact and the Canberra Times if people want to come in and get a copy that's of that. That's always a draw card. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's quite, it's quite popular. Um, we open fairly early in the morning and we get quite a lot of people working in the precinct and then later in the day people heading to the library. So it's my sense that this place should be well used by our community and I'm starting to weave uh, more discussions of some of the big ideas that are shaping Canberra and debates that are happening here into the program. We had a discussion this morning around our Canberra Souvenirs collection and some of the memorabilia that's being commissioned for the centenary year in 2013. Oh wow. Um, that was really well attended. So. Do you have anything planned for the centenary? Yeah, we've got uh, quite a lot planned. Um, we've got a wonderful exhibition of decorative arts from the official residences, so the Lodge, uh, Kirribilli, and Government House and Admiralty House in Sydney. We've also got an exhibition that will be looking at what it might feel like to live in Canberra a hundred years from 2013, so that's quite an adventurous show. Wow, well, can you tell us about that? Any, any yeah. secret or is it all secret? Uh, it, it is a bit under wraps. <laughs> we've been working in partnership with the ANU on that one, so we've had some of the scientists there looking at future climate projections, wow. transport and energy scenarios, and we've also um, working with a number of artists who are working along those themes. So there'll be a, a bit of looking back, but mostly looking forward. That'll Something to look forward to, that'd be great. In terms of exhibitions, what kind of turnover do you have here? 
How long do they normally stay in um, show? Some of the exhibitions, we've had some exhibitions that have really been kind of happenings um, with artists out in a glassed in gallery on Civic Square um, that have lasted for an hour. Um, some of them last three to four months. Some of the major exhibitions, like um, this exhibition of abstract art we're standing in at the moment, um, is about a two and a half month exhibition. So that's probably our average. That said, um, we do have uh, permanent like exhibitions. The Nolan exhibition. That's right. This the uh, the Nolan collection mm -hmm. here, and uh, the Canberra Stories Gallery, which has little modules um, that delve into fairly detailed stories of communities that have helped shape Canberra over time. And where do you see Canberra Museum and Gallery going in the future? Um, I think really we're going to grow. We're going to do more of what we do. Um, we're going to do it better. We're going to engage more of our community. It's an interesting uh, place to work in Canberra, which is, as you know, really well endowed with cultural institutions. We've got the National Gallery, the Museum of Australian Democracy, National Library and Archives, mm -hmm. National Museum of Australia War Memorial, um, which all speak very well, I think, to a national audience. But we are really more about the kind of grit and feel and detail of our community and its history and our place and how it's grown up over time. So the more we can engage with different parts of the community to tell those stories and to involve them in discussions about where Canberra is going, um, the more we'll be fulfilling our role. Wonderful. And ACT Museums and Galleries also has the three historic places that we mentioned before. That's right. So tell us about those. There's Lanyon Homestead, Calthorpe's House and Mugga Mugga. Yeah, um, they're all very unique in their way. Probably if I start with Mugga Mugga, that's a shepherd's cottage that was one of many cottages connected to the 2000 hectare Duntroon estate, which was one of the first big rural estates in this area in the 1830s. Um, and that's developed over time. It's, it's a kind of been a living site, if you like. It's been added to over time. It's a, it's a beautiful old property, a really good way to get in touch with the experience of living on the limestone plains in those early days before Canberra even existed. Calthorpe's is another interesting one that was um, built in 1927. Um, it's in Red Hill. Um, Calthorpe's house was designed by the same Melbourne architects that designed the lodge, so there's a nice connection with a domestic residence and a much more special home mm -hmm. um, in Canberra. It, it's quite special to Calthorpe's house because it includes all of the original furnishings and objects from the Calthorpe's that lived in that house. So you oh, open wow. a drawer, oh, that's exactly what was there at the time that it was gifted to the Territory. So the last one is Lanyon Homestead. That's right. And I'm sure it's unique in its way as well. It is and you know probably one of um, Canberra's most loved historic sites. I think it's been um, open to the public from the mid-1970s and has a special place in a lot of Canberrans' heart. Lanyon is in the far south of Canberra um, on Tharwa Drive, um, just as you leave the southern suburbs. It's, it's quite a unique um, cluster of rural buildings and once accommodated a population of around 60 people working as blacksmiths, cobblers. Um, it is also one of the um, few sites in the region that has really strong connection with convict history. And with the three historic places, where are they going in the future? Are we just working on preserving them for future generations? Um, that's one really very important part of what we do. Um, we are also looking at expanding our community programs all the time um, so people have more opportunities to come and enjoy them. They already have quite busy education programs and a, a lot of school children in the ACT will have been out to participate in those programs to experience an afternoon as life as, of, of life as a convict. We are looking at developing our programs in the gardens at Lanyon over the next um, year or so and we've got some really exciting plans afoot there. Thank you.